So it looks like we have another massive battle on our hands. The Skaven is coming over to take Sartosa. This could definitely be it for us. The Skaven, I think, are much more terrifying than the goblins. One of their lords is raiding our village, though, and he's not close enough to these other lords, I don't think. So we could potentially ambush him. Okay, I don't know if this is the best layout to be fighting Skaven, because uh, we have a bunch of cavalry, and I was thinking that we just kind of run down their gunmen, which I can do. I have a new mount, by the way. It's a little bit uh, quicker. It has more charge, I think. Well, it has way more charge. It's like a dinosaur type of thing. Which the other one is a dinosaur as well, but this is like a more aggressive dinosaur, if you will. Let's toss some bombs in here. Get some AoE going. Can you find their casters, kind of? Or maybe take out these rat ogres. This is messy. We ended up losing 26 units. One paladin got killed, which kind of sucks. And some other pretty decent units. We have all of our mounted units in this party, but we did take out 173 and we took this guy prisoner. We'll just capture him. Do also keep in mind, we have negative 96 relation with the Skaven and somebody on Discord was saying that impacts how easy it can be to recruit their units. So maybe that's why the Rattling Gunners will not join us. It's weird because we're with every faction, but the Skaven seems to be the only faction that we're really having problems with. Okay, we were able to get the Rattling Gunners by using the camp menu. All four them join. Well now I'm really hoping we can fend off Sartosa so we can do the tier 10 dungeon with the Rattling Gunners. We got an orc army heading over here and they're not at war with the Skaven I guess. I wonder if they're gonna help the Skaven in the siege. That would be brutal. So 1380 of them are taking on one of our patrols and there's 149 plus another 149 plus 132. That's 432 units. So that's gonna be around 1800 Skaven that we have to fend off. Oh and here they go. We have 483 against a 1984. I think the problem with guns in this mod is they just do too much damage maybe. Like they do 120 piercing damage, which is just insane when you compare it to like any archers or anything. I'm not sure like the repercussions of that. It just seems like that's too much maybe, but I don't know. And yeah, I have this two-hander that caused me to lose health when I kill, but it does tons of damage. It's gonna get in up here and start stabbing. I think I have the pole arm as well. Oh yeah, I do. This one might be more reliable actually because I can stab from further. Yeah, this might be good. Oh, and we're crashed. Okay, well, to be fair, I do have the max battle size three times what they recommend. So if it is going to be a problem, then I'll just lower the battle size. We do get another crash, but uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of AoE going down because the Skaven have uh, their Globideers that do AoE damage. Just got to get this overhead swing motion going on here. And I can just back off whenever I take too much damage and regen it. If I can just do that and not get knocked out, I think we win. I need a weapon that can crush through blocks though. Like maybe I should get 50 strength so I can use Gotrax's axe. Because it can crush through blocks and as a bonus against shields. Double kill. Triple kill. Hidden kills. 980 XP. Oh yeah. This time, I'm not actually pulling our beefier, more elite units back. I'm letting them all just hold the line from the very start. In the previous siege, I pulled like our better units back. And I do think that might've been a mistake. Like I'm not controlling any infantry. The only units I pulled back was the master engineers. I don't know where our rattling gunners are, by the way, or if they're still doing anything. I don't think you regenerate ammo like you do in some other mods, or maybe you have to have a certain upgrade at the town, which we do not have. But I was noticing that my bombs were not replenishing. I mean, it looks like we're actually doing just as good as we were against the goblins. I have 22 wounded, which I think a lot of that is our really crap tier companions that are just there to just basically run into the meat grinder and tank a little bit. We've killed 200 and we've lost like 40 or something. So it feels like we're on pace here. It seems like this might be the layout to defend, honestly. That or the other castle that I tried to attack earlier, it was really rough to attack, but at least this is a town. So if we hold this, we have access to the tavern and we have access to somewhere that we can sell goods and prisoners especially if there's a ransom broker. We might just be winning because we have a lot of our elite units here right now. And then once they die, then we're screwed. And maybe they haven't been sending in their elite units yet. I've also noticed that their AOE does not do much damage to you if you have armor. Like I'm taking zero damage from the AOE, two damage from their AOE. And so that's pretty much being negated by a lot of our better high tier units. Come on, get a shot off. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah. Hold your fire, hold your fire, hold your fire. Yep, pull back, pull back. Oh man. The kill feed. 
That was like a good 20 kills, I think, with that. So at this point in the battle, I don't know if we were on pace to win. It really depends on where our troops are in the party and if our best ones have come out yet. We do get a crash that at the time I thought was from the battle size, so we do lower the battle size. In hindsight, to move troops around the garrison quicker, I just installed an auto clicker script. And I think I might have hit the button for that on accident and it may have caused this crash. So I lowered battle size down to 282. I think it was like 450 before, or maybe it was closer to 400. The base is still 150 and they recommend that. So do keep that in mind. It's just, I don't know, for videos and such, and just like, I don't know how I see the game. I like the battle size to be higher. It's my own personal preference. I think 300 is still okay, but it kind of changes up the game in a lot of ways. Now, that being said, we are still at war with every faction and we currently have the orcs coming for us. So I don't know if it's like going to be, you know, that big of a deal that we're making the game a little bit easier. And even then, I don't really know how this is going to impact things. Like, I don't know if it's actually going to make things easier. I was just going to fast forward till we had around 600 kills again, but I did change our layouts and I put all archers at the top of our party. So we're going to have a bunch of archers in that archer nest up there. A lot of archers in that nest as well. And then more over there and up on this little thing. And we have a bunch back here too, which is a little bit worrying. Not sure what these guys are doing exactly, but it seems like they are getting shots off. And they can't do friendly fire, I don't think. One problem with these waystalkers, I will say, is I think they only have one quiver, so they do run off arrows pretty fast. Yeah, I don't think they're as strong as the Gisales, but I still put them at the top anyways. They're the uh, wood elf archers. And the thought process here is I'm gonna try to be as beastly as I can to kind of uh, help thin out their front line. And I think the archers back there well, I'm seeing some of them are not firing. They still have arrows though, so I think they just will fire if they, you know, have line of sight and there's no friendly units in the way. It's good that they're up on this hill though. I think since they're looking down, they can still fire. Like here we got a big uh, gap. One thing I also did is put the master engineers at the bottom of the party, so they're not going to show up till way later. And a lot of our units, like our better units, aren't going to show up till later, I think. But by then, like, our archers are going to be out of ammo, so I don't really know if I should be putting the archers at the bottom so they come out later, or to the top so they come out earlier. What I was worried about is when they come in later, they're not going to go to their positions up on, like, these uh, nests and, like, in that tower thing. I don't know what it's called, actually. That's called a nest, right? And that over there is, like, a wall, as we would assume. It is kind of good that a lot of these waystalkers are over here because they have two handers, so once they're done with their shooting then they pull out the two-handers get knocked out or killed and then we get units to replace them with reinforcements but yeah so far we've killed 300 lost about 60 i want to say so it seems like things are going better but do keep in mind last time we did not have the Gisales or the wood elf archers out at the start we're using better units at the start here we have some units stuck back here some of these archers are kind of hiding we can do nearby units with the button that's next to zero and what i'm going to do with those guys is i'm going to try to put them up on one of these walls i was thinking originally that the walls would be filled with archers when I was kind of thinking about this loadout, but I think I might be able to manually put them on these walls. These guys seem to be aggro on dudes that are not in their line of sight though. Although those guys up there might have a better uh, position. Maybe I should get units up there instead. So I could either put them up on that wall, which would be good. They're going to be shooting down at these dudes as they come in. That could be good. Looks like they are getting quite a few shots off. Or I could put them in this tower up here, where they're more vulnerable though. Maybe I put them on the wall. Let's try that. When we got reinforcements coming in that are really powerful by the looks of it. I'm seeing a few elite units there. I've been saving them for an occasion like this. But yeah, are we going to be able to get these guys to get in a firing position? I mean, some of these guys are firing already. Maybe we got to move them back a little bit. Put them like over here. Also spread them out a little bit. Spread out. Go like there. Even up in this tower, this could be okay, right? They could still see down. They can shoot them as they enter. I don't know, they're behaving kind of weird. One thing I can do is split them up a little bit more. Like I use the minus button to only grab these guys. Have them hold this position. Then grab these guys over here, which seem like they're listening. Pull them this way. And grab some of these guys in the back. I don't want to grab all of them though. I just want to grab the ones that are like kind of not doing anything. These dudes is fine. Move them over there. Seems all right. It's better than what it was, I guess. Got some more units back here. We'll drag up. It seems like right here is not a bad spot for archers. Like, we'll just put them right there, I guess, for now. Because, uh, oh yeah, they're coming in. You toss some bombs in here. 
Looks like we're getting reinforcements in. Scarlet the Wanderer has 40 kills. Holy hell. I, do I need a potion? I don't have any one-hander right now, so you guys gotta help me out. I don't really want a potion yet, but if I have to, then I have to. There we go. Reinforcements coming in. As far as these reinforcements, we got two ancient Croxigors, which are extremely beefy. See a couple Gorals, a Chaos Troll up there. Yeah, these guys are going to be cleaving. We killed 900, 100 wounded. Wait, we won. As far as what we lost, 10 Waystalkers, which are the good Wood Elf Archers, 4 Gisales only. We lost 34 units from the main party, and then from the garrison we lost 39. We took out a thousand Skaven, and the enemy has been forced to retreat, which I don't really like that. We can't capture the wards that way. Looks like these guys are stupid enough to attack again though, even though they just lost half their army. We're chasing the undead. So the entire Skaven army is heading over here to chase this undead lord, who I don't really know what he was doing over here, but they do tend to path by Sartosa when they're... Uh, just going to do stuff so uh, yeah they're gonna all be taking him out in the meantime we can head over to like this arapo goblin layer and we can see if there's any units that have a lot of prisoners uh you can skirt on by in this river looks like there's no prisoners on those guys five prisoners over here decent units might as well just get them we engage this elven party that had quite a few prisoners and i want to show just the absolute wreckage of this lord oh he tanked that? <laughs> he tanked that one though. For some reason they weren't charging and uh, yeah, the guy's just sitting still. Double kill, triple kill, kill tacular. You know what I really should be doing on this battle is using Ogre like Super Punch to knock out their archers. And I could recruit them and we could use them for defense later. But uh, yeah, I forgot to equip that. So we'll just try that on the next battle. So I wanted to go to a dungeon, but the Skaven came back and they're now attacking Sartosa. But Lord Grum is here, which is a random dwarf that I pointed to be a vassal who had like six or five leadership. They are attacking it right now. They only have 853 units this time. Last time they had 1900 and they couldn't take it. So it looks like the Skaven might not be known too well for their intelligence. We're about to sit here and hold my shield up. Just do this till the shield runs out of durability. A lot of these Skaven don't cross your blocks. They only have a few units that do. Alrighty, my shield finally broke. I've been kind of using this strategy off and on, but uh, hopefully that reduced the amount of casualties that we took. I think it did. I want to say I was diverting a lot of attacks towards myself. Okay, they have zero units left. We lost about 60 units dead, total around 200 wounded and dead. I wonder if we should let their lords go even though we have bad relation with them. So they might defect to us later, but I think you need a lot of relation with them for them to defect. I don't think we're going to be able to do a campaign to, you know, wipe them out anytime soon. So maybe it's just better to let them go. One thing I forgot you can do to get some more free troops is you can talk to your constable and go down to let us talk about patrols and troop movement. I want to list a patrol. Let's do a small elite patrol for 6,000. It actually only costed 4,000, so maybe that wasn't the elite one. Sartosa patrol with 17 units. We can go talk to them now. We can say, I want to give some troops to you. Then we can actually take their troops. Two Croxigors, two Skink War Chiefs, four Revered Guardians, four Cold One Champions, and five Scar Veterans, which we cannot take these actually. But we can actually tell them to reinforce Sartosa. And just in case they don't make it, we already jacked most of their troops anyways. But yeah, they're going right into Sartosa. And that was definitely worth the 4k, I would say. These Croxigors are very beastly. They're worth at least 2k. And yeah, the five scar veterans made it in. These are extremely beefy melee units. You can only do that once every six days though. So yeah, it's good to do that on cooldown. Also, another thing you need to get more troops is you see these patrols wandering around. You just go and talk to them and tell them to reinforce Sartosa. And not including these 96 units we have in our party, Sartosa's garrison's up to 600. And I would say about 100 to 150 of them are low tier units like Chaos Zealots and Villagers and just pretty crap tier units that we've just kind of jammed in there. But I am hoping the size of garrison is going to deter other factions from attacking Sartosa so we can go do other stuff. 